innovation has been my passion. I've been teaching it in university. I've written books about it, and it's been my passion for 25 years. And I think that it, it's a really valid insight is that once you have an in, in, uh, implementation gap, what you tend to do is that you tend to change the strategy, which is perfect. And that is exactly what is happening in many countries and, 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 and so forth. So extremely briefly, uh, I know that we were discussing, dis discussing about this already yesterday, but I wanted to explain to you once more is that how do we see the possibility of making the change happen. And if you're analyzing how the change happens in pretty much any industry, is that it's consisting of three, three things. First of all, you really have to identify what is the problem. And it's really complicated because we are so much in a hurry is that we don't have time to analyze what the problem is. Then the second, second is that you have to have some kind of an idea on how to fix the problem, which is strategy. And then you have to have the implementation. And if one of these is missing, nothing happens. So this is extremely obvious, but, but worth, worth uh, mentioning once more. So like we, like we were discussing yesterday, how I see the problem uh, in education in most of the schools of the world, there are perfect examples of, of uh, or perfect exam exceptions, and, and many of you rep uh, represent that kind of schools. But as we mentioned, one of, one of the problems in the world is that schools are changing, but the world is changing uh, even faster, and the gap might be widening. So if we are not finding new ways to, to close this gap, things might be even worse in 2030, 2040, 2050. And it's complicated to, to fix these problems top down, in a top down uh, strategy. So what is the solution? There is absolutely, there, there, there is no such thing as an e e easy fix. But how we see is that uh, most likely how this gap can be closed in any industry is identifying great innovations, uh, great examples of things that do work and that can close the gap. And that's why you are here, for example. All of you, you are not pushing new things to the schools. You are doing great things that could be of tremendous value in every country of the world. So that's, that's the possible solution. And then the implementation. So when, when we studied all of this, and, and we've been ident analyzing, analyzing this problem, how to make the change happen, we were putting a lot of emphasis on finding great innovations and packaging them in a beautiful way. But then we sort of like came up with a painfully obvious insight, which is that that's not enough. Because if the innovations don't spread, nothing will change. So the implementation is not about finding great innovations or great innovators like you. It's making them spread. And anyone who has been studying uh, the diffusion of innovations, of spreading of innovations, complicated as hell. And, and there are two main groups uh, when, when you are trying to make change uh, that are extremely loud. There's a group of people who are excited, as many of you are. So you are excited about education. Then there is a loud group that, is, that hates the chains. And those are the ones who are having the discussion. But the bad news is that they are not making the chains. The chains happens in the middle. And they are teachers who are stressed, who are fighting with the resources, and, and so on. So how, you, how can you take the majority of the schools, the majority of the teachers, excited about the chains? And that's extremely complicated. Uh, so for us at the moment, the key thing about our implementation is this one, meaning that yes, we are confident that we can, we can identify great innovations and great innovators. But then how you can spread them first to early adapters, then early maturity, and then late maturity. And, and, and the more we study about this, the more we discuss with experts on, on other industries as well, there's different strategy for all of these, all of these layers. And, and at the moment, how we are approaching this one, this is going through extremely complicated thing in few slides. But first of all, innovators. Uh, if you really want to get innovators excited, they need to get recognition. So that's what we are trying to give, not only to you, but any teacher anywhere in the world who is doing great things. And I think that the world at the moment, we are not giving them th th this today. The world is not extremely good in putting teachers on spotlight. 
So this is the key thing, put, put the rec give recognition to the teachers and innovators because they deserve it. Then who, who are the ones who are the first ones to implement those, those uh, meanings that I don't have my own idea innovation, but I love this innovation. And it takes a lot of courage to be the first one to implement. So we want to create a cult of forerunners, which means that yes, we are forerunners, we are just as important as the innovators, because we are the ones who are making the change happen. Then the third group is early maturity. And that's, where, that's the group that starts to make a massive change. And what we are trying to do in here is that we are trying to convince them through success stories. So what we are trying to do is that we try to identify a great innovations and then stories about them spreading and stories about those innovations working in other countries as well. And then there is a late maturity, and with them, what we are, what we are sort of like, what is our strategy with them, is that it's, it's sort of like a different kind of tone saying is that, yes, you don't have to be involved, but then there's a risk that you are left behind. And all of these are complicated, and all of this, we have to be extremely humble with this kind of uh, approach, but that's what we are willing to do. Our goal is to be working on this area for the following 30, 40, 50 years. And so on, because change is not, it's not easy. But I'll give you a, a before, before, before going, going to the uh, first foreign speakers, uh, I, I'll explain you briefly what is our implementation strategy at the moment. So we are not trying to force new innovations that don't seem to be spreading. What we are trying to do is that we try to identify the innovations that seem to be spreading already and that people are excited about. So we try to identify things that teachers have a feeling that, wow, this is something that works, this is something I love, this is something I would recommend easily to other teachers as well. Because I think that those are the innovations that might make the change happen. Uh, and like mentioned yesterday, uh, we are not only looking for innovations, we are also looking for schools that are excited about implementing these innovations. So we are trying to create a huge amount of great content, but also a great audience who is willing to, willing to try those, those things. So how does it look in practice? I'll go through the whole of the 100 ecosystem uh, in, in five, minutes, five minutes. So the essence of 100 is, is identifying 100 great innovations annually. A lot of hard work, but we are going to have 100 global selection in 2018, 2019, 2020, and so on and so on. Identify great stuff and package them well. But we don't want to be a closed community. So what we are, what we are doing is that we are saying that anyone, anywhere in the world who has a great innovation, we want to hear. We want to give them an, a, an easy to use platform so that they can be pitching their ideas. So our goal is that slowly, uh, in two years, three years, four years time, there's going to be thousands of great innovations that can use our platform for free for fr uh, spreading those innovations. Some of those innovations uh, will go to the global list, some of them don't. And, and I think that some of the best innovators are not going to be using 100 Open because they are so busy teaching or making change happen in the classroom. So that's, that's, the, that's the reason why we need to have an extremely passionate research team, which is led by Jessica, as, as, as you heard yesterday. But we will, uh, we will be putting a huge amount of, of resources on identifying also those innovations that are not proposing their innovations to us. Uh, but also, it's a big world, and there's great things happening, happening all over the world. So we need to have ambassadors. And, and we will be asking all of you is that, are you willing to be 100 ambassadors, or do you know someone who would love to be 100 ambassador? And our goal is to have these kind of ambassadors in every country of the world by the end of next year. So it would mean is that we have people who are excited about making change happen, and who keep us updated about the great stuff that is happening in every continent. Uh, in addition to this one, uh, we, we will be changing our review model next year, which means that we are, we are having kind of like Oscar uh, approach, which means that we are, we are, a, we are setting up a 100 academy consisting of maybe 200 education experts in all continents who are going through these. And we will be approaching many of you, saying, are you willing to be part of this and so on, and, 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 and to identify. But we want to be a kind of like independent operation 
where, where teachers and education experts are making the crucial decisions on what are the education experts that should be promoted. Uh, but like mentioned yesterday, we also want to be concentrating on either themes or regions that we find exciting. And, and we made the first deal uh, last week with 100 Victoria, and we are identifying 10 great innovations in the state of Victoria, and we help them spread. We could easily do the same in Los Angeles, or in Bhutan, or in Bangladesh, or in Helsinki, or in Venezuela, any part of the world, and concentrating only on those innovations, and maybe some of those will go also to the global list. Of but also another possibility is that we can, we can have th theme-based spotlights, which could be spotlight on positive psychology, spotlight on school acoustics, spotlight on school food, spotlight on assessment, spotlight on self-assessment, or spotlight on re-educating teachers and so on. So trying to identify then create innovations only on one specific area. Uh, but like mentioned, it's, it's also, it takes a lot of convincing. So our goal in here is to, to make media out of all of this. So if there's innovations that are spreading, we are more than happy to spread, spread the message. So if, if, if you are making any deals, if your innovation goes to other countries, if you, if you hear something great, please let us know and we are more than happy to spread the message all over the world. Because every success story is, it, it helps any innovation to spread. Because people quite easily say that, yes, but education in innovations don't really spread. And when you say that, yeah, that's true, but this innovation has been spreading to 80 countries, this has been spreading to 60 countries, and so on. Some of them don't, but some of them do. So there's going to be a huge amount of content. There's going to be interviews, there's going to be stories, articles, and, and so forth, and, and, and we are planning to be a, uh, one of the leading education medias, cons, con, cons, uh, and, and we will be devoting most of our, our, our space to innovations in education. So our speciality is the innovations in education. Uh, but again, like mentioned yesterday, we are also looking for 100 schools. And what do I mean by 100 school? It's a school that wants to be updated about great things happening all over the world. So if there's school anywhere in the world who says that, yes, please send us information about great things happening in Finland or in Canada or in Australia, or whatever, we are more than happy to send them newsletters. But not only that, we are, ha we are happy to give them a personal service 24-7. And they can send us a request saying that we would love to introduce a new program about empathy. And then we can say is that this is what is happening in Canada roots of empathy, and then we can be proposing X amount of other innovations and say is that if you are excited about this, please contact, contact these persons. So this is, this is the 100 schools. And just like with 100 ambassadors, our goal is to be having 100 schools in every country of the world by the end of next year. So we are creating a network of innovators, ambassadors, and 100 schools. And, and, and we, will be, we will be releasing the first 100 schools tomorrow, tomorrow as well. So the network is already building. Uh, we will have 100 summit. The goal is that we are having the next 100 summit again next year. Uh, next year, we are asking from you feedback on how to improve this one, this one and, and, and so on. But I think that it's crucial not only to be work digitally, but have face-to-face -face meetings, create networks. And I think like evenings like yesterday, where you're discussing in, in the restaurant tables, when you're creating connections, that's how innovation spread. It takes time, but without that kind of connection, nothing will happen. So, and, and, and I've been visiting huge amount of education seminars, and in most of them, it's ministers discussing, or it's the heads of national agencies discussing. Uh, they are great people, I, I don't have any, anything against them. But it, it, there's extremely small amount of top-level seminars where, where it's all about top teachers, heads of education, heads of curriculum, and so on, head top innovators, and this is exactly what, what we are trying to do. Uh, but we are also promoting this one, and, and like mentioned yesterday, uh, we've been this fall, for example, we've been in Moscow, we've been in France, we've been in Singapore, Melbourne, uh, next week we are going to be in Mexico, then we are going to be in London, and so on. So our goal is that we are more than happy also to come to your country to discuss about this one, 
uh, send the information, spread the word, and so on, because it, it's going to be taking a lot of hard work. And then the last one is that we are collecting a 100 advisor report. We already have an extremely high-profile high advisor report, but we are, are, are going to be asking high-level people who are passionate about making change happen in education from all areas, and then we are going to keep the 100 advisor report as well. So in short, this is a huge amount of work, but it's all coming, coming together with one sentence, which means that we want to be the leading expert in education innovations in K-12 by, uh, by 2020. And it seems like a massive ecosystem, but I think that it's doable, and, and that's, that's, uh, that's what we are committed to do. So this is 100 ecosystem in, in, in 10, 15 minutes, minutes and so on. But then let's move to a kind of like to the essence. And uh, when we started a few, few uh, years ago, uh, there were so many people who said is that, yes, but education is different. You cannot spread innovations in education. Education is no... Uh, Education is no Uber, education is no Airbnb, or whatever. Education is totally different. Every country is different. The differences are huge or whatever. So it's, it's a ridiculous idea to spread education innovations. But then you start to be visiting countries, discussing with experts, and you find out that that's actually not the case. It's the problem with the top-down system, because there are so many gatekeepers who say that, yes, but this would never, ever work in our country. And then you are discussing with teachers, and they say, nonsense, it would work perfectly. So the next session uh, will be about sp this specific theme. Uh, we are having three absolutely brilliant uh, innovators who have created something remarkable and who have made the innovation spread to other countries.